Hello, good morning, my dear friends. And we are again with uh, Dinesh Kumar. And we are here to, today to talk about many, many, many. So uh, how are you? First of all, tell me. Dinesh, yeah, I'm good. I'm doing fine. Thank you, Sajad. Thank you for having me on your show. I always feel nice talking to you. So I thought let's do it uh, one more time. Yeah, last time we had a uh, few talks about money management and it was it was new for me as well. But now, you know, with, with the more clarity, we can talk about money. And uh, after that talk also, I could figure out that, okay, most of the people are, uh, you know, lacking this money management thing in their life because some, some people are earning, some people are uh, having money, but they don't know what to do about that. So first of all, I would just like to know more about you that uh, how, how, what is your journey is all about this money managing and what you do actually. Okay, uh, so, uh, so just like I am money, mega money mentor. Uh -huh. And uh, that's my title uh, as a coach, which I give to myself. Uh, but uh, in simple terms, I'm a money management coach. And as a money management coach, what I want to teach people is about how to manage their money well. Uh, see, the problem which I faced earlier in my uh, financial journey when I started earning money was I was uh, getting good salary and now I wanted to make good use of that money. My initial goal was to get a good house for my parents so that we can move from uh, a lower class locality to a decent locality where they can get facilities mm -hmm. and they can be comfortable instead of living just a very lowly kind of life they could be more comfortable so that was my goal so i was a very saver kind of person uh, i would use some money but most of the time i was saving 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 really like cutting off all the joys of my life sacrificing a lot of joys of my life just to save and I did accomplish my goals, but uh, what I realized in the process was I was not getting joy out of it. I was making money, good money. I was accomplishing goals also, but I was not getting the joy. Happiness was not coming uh, and it started affecting me physically, mentally, emotionally, my relations. It started getting affected because if you are not happy yourself, you can't make other people happy and then people get pushed away. Uh, that kind of thing started happening. So like and uh, initially i was in the problem stage i saw other people who could be happy even with lesser money so i started wondering like how come like i'm making more money but i'm still not happy so multiple things i met people i learned from people 15 years back i came across this book secrets of millionaire mind where i learned this jar system wherein like uh, you create jars for various areas of your life for long-term saving, for financial freedom, for your necessities, day-to-day -day necessities, for your learning. So for everything, there are jars. Basically, you allocate part of your money for each of these areas, for charity also. And I found that this kind of system can help create balance in your life. So that you save some money, but you enjoy also money. It's not that you are going to one extreme, either totally spending all the money and not left with any savings or totally saving 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 and not enjoying any money both are bad extremes according to me uh -huh. so i started putting into practice and i started getting good results myself my friends felt that i was improving in various ways so they started asking me what i am doing right i helped them they got good results so all in all i started getting good feedback that i am good with money management yeah. and finally i felt like if I can do well for other people, why not take it big time? And this year, finally, I took a call of becoming a money management coach. So how uh, how is like, see, I would like to share here something. As you said about jar system, just be be beside this laptop, there are six jars are there. Jar really? Jars. Yeah. I, I would like to show Good. that. See. Uh, yeah, please. Okay. So th this is my first jar which is, uh, you can see here, uh, it says 10% uh, of financial freedom. Wow, very so, nice. Now, <clears throat> the second second one is... I would like to have more students like you. See, this is another jar, which is 10% of long-term uh, long saving for... Saving to spend. Spending, yeah. There is a 5% jar of uh, giving. Charity. 
Yes, this is a 55% jar of necessity. Very nice. And Very nice. Uh, there is a 10% jar for play for myself. Yeah. And uh, this is the uh, this is for education. 10% more. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. yeah. So here, as oh, you good. suggested, all the jars are there. Kudos to you. But yeah, so why is money only in one jar, not in other jars? Uh, yeah, <laughs> because this this is just for when I started, I thought that okay, I will put physical money here. But then what happened? I put it in myself and then I, it was not practically feasible now to put the physical money. So what I did, I created yeah. the same thing in the accounts, like in bank accounts. Very nice. And yes. now I'm allocating like just uh, transferring digitally. Yes, that's the way to go. Creating different accounts and putting money in. Actually, jars is a metaphor that yes, is being yes, used. Yes, yes, yes. So, but, but I keep it in my front of my eyes always. So I remember that, okay, there are jar system in place. And uh, one question I'll answer. And one suggestion I can give is you can yeah. keep putting slips over there that, yeah. okay, I have put in this much money over there, this yeah, much I money over there. That. And this, this jar, you said, yeah, there is a money here. So, because this is a final uh, financial freedom account. So I read somewhere that never put empty, like never keep this empty. Keep it empty. So, yes. Yeah. So even even this is just for my uh, looking. Also, I am not keeping that empty. And there are so many uh, different currencies of international currencies there. So it, in my mind, <laughs> okay, I am going to invest so many things. I think all jars keep some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will Don't do keep that. Jar empty because uh, when you look at it, you should feel that yeah, some money is there. Some money is there. Some money. Then I'll put. I'll keep. I uh, will. I'll start doing that also. That whenever I'll put digitally. I will put uh, the number on the slip and I'll put here in this jar. So, so Actually, Sajad, uh, you asked me about my journey. I want to know a little about your journey also. Let's keep it both ways. Like, don't keep it focused just on me. Let's like keep it both ways because uh, for me, for my audience also, I want to know uh, what's your journey, like what, how it has been with you. Good, good question. So, what's the role of money? But what's about money in your life? Uh, no, no. This this is very uh, interesting question because you asked me because you are a money manager, you know. And I put the title also as a money maker meets the money manager. You know why? Yes. Uh, because in my life, since last fifteen years, I have done so many businesses. I created so much money uh, from different different kind of businesses. But I, I couldn't manage it. This is this yeah, is you to, uh, uh, very true things about myself that because nobody taught me first. Plus, uh, the thing was I was not surrounded by with people who can who are a good manager of money. I always I I was always surrounded by the spenders or maximum mm -hmm. savers maximum. So mm -hmm. the problem was I become myself a, as a spender and I couldn't, uh, you know, manage money like, okay, I have to spend there, spend or, or invest there. Third important thing in my life happened that uh, because kind of uh, religious background uh, uh, around. Mm -hmm. So what, what happens? People have that kind of notions, you know, that, oh, no, 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 no. Too much money is not, not good for you. Uh, you have to, you know, give charity more. Or you have to, uh, you 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 don't you should not keep money with you so much. Even regarding investment, probably your religion says what yes. can be done, what cannot be done. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Sharia yes. rules are there. Yes, yeah. yes. So many rules are there. So that happens, and then somehow it happens that in my mind that okay, too much money can be a problem, you know. Yes. So that's why, yes. even though I ha I had so much money, I just gave it away, kind of. So. Uh, recently, after as you said, you your journey also started with six hundred minds, um, millionaire minds. But yes, uh, yes, there is a my journey is little little different. But yeah, with the same line. Uh, before two three years, I got this book. I read it, but as other books, I read it and I was like, okay, good good look, money talk, it's okay, fine, and put it back, and I forget about it. And then I I had this uh, webinar with uh, for a, a Millionaire Mind uh, experience online. Prachi. Yes, with Prachi. Prachi. Yeah. 
so when i was i was watching that and suddenly i got the idea that okay i i read this book and i thought that this this program is in usa not in india and then mm-hmm. i asked then she was like no it's happening in india i said okay then i have to go that because i wanted to le- learn about money because i was in 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 my whole 15 years i lost so much money losses and this and that so i recently i just took the whole all responsibility on myself that okay i if i am having uh, like lo- losing money it means i am responsible for it and it means i don't know something about money and that that's how i ended up going to mmi and then my brain uh, rewired about money got rewired yeah actually probably you don't learn that much by reading book rather than by experiential learning like what you got over there in mmi that's yeah. where like you felt oh yeah this is practical thing yeah this is practical and this is this can be done and see the problem is until 15 years i was not taking the responsibility i was blaming the things most of the people blame the things like okay from for yes. this reasons we got the losses from this reason we are not we are still poor from l- we don't have so much of luck that's why we are poor you know we we keep blaming things we don't take even myself like when i said like i when i was saving money i was accomplishing financial goals and everything but i was feeling pain around i was not taking responsibility myself i was blaming other people oh he is doing this because of which i am experiencing pain he is doing this because of which i am experiencing pain uh, initially i was not willing to take responsibility uh-huh. yeah most of us come with that mindset because blaming is easy taking easy. responsibility is more tough and everybody goes for easy thing easy. our mind yeah. goes for easy thing only yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly so this is this is what this is my story is all about but see meeting you and uh, meeting so many other people like minded i got the idea that okay uh, money is important it's not only important but you have to respect money in a way that money should respect you as well what what is happening was we we feel like mostly mostly most of the people the poor people or who are not managing money those kind of people don't respect money in spite of that they they do that okay money is bad many uh, rich people are not good you know the, those mindset are there that kind of conditioning some of we have acquired from our environment see uh, what people think is like if we are not able angur khatte wala like the grapes are sour it's yeah. that kind of thing if we are not able to achieve it that means it's not good nah, it's not good it's not good it's not good so uh, in in my college days uh, i still remember one thing that uh, my friend told me that uh, whoever says that because three four my friends were super rich super rich like mercedes and bmws and those days mm-hmm. and we are in in those lines that middle class on, on bikes scooters so, scooters all yeah so one day i i remember still remember so many years back 20 years back uh, that uh, one one guy was saying that mm, money is not so important in life that one, he, one of those super rich guys no one of the he, he don't have the money guy the middle okay. class okay. my friend he said okay. that money is not that so important in life there are so many other things important in life he was saying like that so the super rich guy one one rich super rich guy he said one line only he said this line only those people say who don't have the who who don't have the money tell me one guy who has money and says that money is not important that 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 time so but i was mm-hmm. i was somehow in dilemma because it was not like that i was poor it was not like that i was super mm-hmm. rich but i was like i was feeling okayish about the sentence that okay when i'll have money i will so you were in middle about that so that's why probably you are in the middle about in financially also in financially <laughs> too yeah exactly you can see that that, that is the pattern so but now now so what's about you that uh, how you uh, get people change their mindset about the money and how you help them to uh, like managing their money that that tough thing because changing the mindset and uh, coming coming back to the managing money is like i i feel that it's very tough for me it's tough 
it is you find it tough because probably as of now you are either new with it or you are not able to do it so that's why you are finding it tough it is like for a child when he starts walking walking is very tough because he, he hasn't been able to do it himself so he feels that or when he starts writing a b c oh my god it's so tough i don't know how people do it whether i'll be able to do it or not so those kind of doubts come so you are finding it tough just because you either haven't done it or you have some mental barrier which tells you it is tough mm -hmm. so when i try to uh, teach people about money management first thing is like i try to gauge how willing they are to take action because they are experiencing pain because of their situation that they are in that pain they are experiencing but are they willing to take action that's my question to them if they are willing to take action then i can guide them in, in the direction of right action uh -huh. so first thing i uh, i uh, explore their beliefs because this kind of belief that money is bad rich people are bad or money is not important that belief system needs to be changed because as long as they are going to carry that belief money is not going to come to people uh -huh. so first thing i start with their mindset once the mindset is in place now they are more prepared to take action so i get give them some financial literacy what are mutual funds what are the different categories of mutual funds how stock markets work what is risk management how insurance works so i give them some financial literacy and by then they are more or less themselves prepared to take action but i still help them create a road map based on their what their current financial situation mm -hmm. is and what they aspire for uh -huh. so I, I give them that kind of roadmap and then the journey starts uh, some initial push is required after that people they it's like riding a bicycle you have to teach them a little about uh, bicycle initially and once they are in momentum then they are free bird like themselves they go about it and and just just talking to you right now my in my mind i just got a question uh qu not question but uh see even getting money managing money is your part getting money also one part and multiplying money also the last part but but one important thing i just realized this is i i, I hope i will make sense but example to take money from people hmm. you know, and providing a value hmm. most of the people like me not not talking about anybody else so many value we give for free yeah and what happens when you give that value for free it is not going to work like it it will not provide the value you are giving and yeah people won't realize the value uh, because they haven't got skin in the game they they have got it for free they they treat it very lightly yeah they will not feel the value of this thing yeah so why why i'm saying uh, like that in this money making thing or in this money making business when you provide value you have to make sure that you are taking money for that because it 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 works for two way because when you will get money you will feel okay good okay and when you are you are you are giving uh, you are giving the value they will also feel okay we paid for this service even if it is small service so it doesn't matter that how much money you charge but you should money you should charge some money because i realize you won't believe this i realize today i, I will add another perspective to this but uh, let me first uh, like uh, finish your thing and uh, you finish your thing and ask me the question that you want to ask nee see the, the question is that the, around this only that how to make this mind share because i have this problem that's why i'm i'm just sharing with you that uh, when i give some value and even it's very valuable thing sometime because of my nature or general nature of me i i give that for free and when i give that for free it means i have some mindset somewhere inside back in my mind that it is difficult for me to take this money so this is the part of that money managing game on, only that when you are giving value you have to you know collect money and you have to you you should have that collecting money see even the major business even in my business the ma main business if something i will take money for that of course but surrounded that i if i give some value I'm, most of the time i give that for free 
and because of that what happens that i let go so much of so many of opportunity to become rich and now what's your stake about the, this is a, this is the question that what is your like explanation or suggestion or coaching about to change this kind of mi mindset that how to feel that taking money for the value is the very good thing okay fine uh, good like i understood uh, what you are talking about and let me like uh, give a different perspective or bigger perspective on this see in this whole world everything is working with the exchange of energy okay we breathe out carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide is taken in by plants and they breathe out uh, they produce oxygen which we breathe in so it's con continuous exchange going on similarly in business or any interaction that we had with other people we exchange energy that energy exchange and money is a form of energy because what is energy energy is the thing which enables you to do work accomplish some work with money you can accomplish lot of work lot of tasks so money is a form of energy in business primarily we work with exchange of energy in the form of money okay so when we are like want and any good thing that happens in this world plants don't exhale or uh, uh, produce oxygen thinking that they have to get carbon dioxide from this person mm -hmm. they will just produce the oxygen and they will get the carbon dioxide from environment and this automatically happens without conscious thinking we have become so much conscious thinking about money that we have started focusing too much of on money and lost uh, like uh, vision of other energies like love respect family values at times peace of mind those are also values those are also energies which we need to have just focusing about money 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 if we lose sight of other things then life is going to become hell in us there is lot of money but people have lost these values and they are fa facing lot of other problems we are like short on money so that's why we tend to focus too much on money but we are in the process of losing those other values like family values uh, peace of mind and those things we are in the process of losing that so we better become conscious that in the holistic thing money is one form of energy not the everything money is not everything hmm. now in a transaction in a business transaction first desire should be that i should be able to willing to give to this person and in coaching business i approach is like if some one i want to coach i should be able to bring positive change in that person's life hmm. taking money from him creates a motivation him him or like makes him realize the value of the service i am going to provide if i realize that this person is really short on money he can't pay me money but he has that desire to bring change in his life and he is going to willing to pay me in terms of respect love or maybe he is willing to pay me later i may let go of money also but typically in normal scenarios i have seen is like people are focusing too much on money and even to get my service they will say like no no i don't have money although they have money in their account mm -hmm. so in that scenarios typically i will say that no get your skin in the game and pay me money and i will provide you service and i will pro provide them service 10 times the value of money they are providing me i am willing to do that but just to get their skin in the game and just to keep them motivated i really ask them to pay the money and yeah. i have no hesitation in that because i know i am going to provide 10 times the value of the money that they are going to give me the money so hmm. that way that hesitation totally goes away for me asking for money makes sense does that help yeah it makes sense but uh, still you know uh, because in my mind if i get see the problem with me again so yeah you you make total sense and i will i will try to implement that as well but the thing is when we are talking about services like yeah i i could relate in few days in last few days that we pay already in our life for the services which is not tangible we already pay like example 
At times we provide uh, tangible services. At time we provide intangible services also. Yes, yes, yes. And the idea of taking something from other person is just to make him feel that okay, what he is getting is of some value. Mm -hmm. If we don't uh, take anything from, if we are going to provide him free, he will treat it very lightly. Like he won't realize that there is something of value coming to him. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah, so uh, I mean, sometimes what happens. Uh, as per my particular thoughts, sometimes what happens that I, because it's my skill, I make very easy things sometimes and it's very valuable for people. But when I give that to somebody, some value, and if even I think that why I am so, uh, I didn't do anything much for this thing. Why I should take some some like money for that? Because I, I didn't do so much things. But for them, it is very valuable. So, you know, that thought keeps me, okay, okay I didn't do, I, I hardly spent 10 minutes ob, over that, but sh I should not charge money for that. It's Something like you, what you do. It is about what it's going to do for them. Yes, yes, yes. See, so, for example, let me give you an analogy or scenario. Let's say a person is very thirsty and kind of about to die out of thirst and he doesn't have water but he has some money in his pocket okay and you have plenty of water and you are near him you can very easily give water but if this person is like holding on to money and all those things and not caring about whether he's going to die even if you give him water like so you have to consider if he doesn't have money uh, you you shouldn't stop yourself. No, unless he gives me money, I won't give him water. No, that's a, like unethical thing. But if he has money and he is not willing to part, I will say like he needs to learn a lesson that okay, money apart from money, the other things are also important. Mm. So it becomes very situational. We shouldn't uh, stick to this thing that we always have to ask for money. There are other things apart from money which if he doesn't have money, but he is going to give us blessings. Uh, like because he doesn't have money currently if he's giving, going to give us love and blessing I will say that's a, not a bad energy exchange let's give him something give him water and get his blessings in exchange that's not a bad transaction yeah uh, not bad not bad we we always always give to poor people like that only like anything we give for food for water for anything we just have to make it very uh, wise decision like we shouldn't blindly follow this thing also no always I have to get money in exchange we shouldn't follow that also blindly mm. because I see like a uh, uh, lot of people started following this blindly out of MMI or this thing. No, if I have give something, I have to get some money in exchange. I won't follow that also blindly. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. So yeah, this is this was good. Good. This was good uh, conversation actually today. So, because I'm, I'm also... I have one question for you. You wonder about like my money management. So I think next five minutes we have to wrap up. I have one question for you. Yeah. I wonder about your, like how you learned about when you say that money making is so easy. Hmm. I find it like amazing. Like was it your environment from you learned or how, like how you feel that money, make? because for me, I always used to wonder like, uh, I carried this mindset that money making is tough. Money making takes hard work. Money making is a struggle because of my conditioning, because of my parenting that way. Like I always felt that way and I always slog very hard to make money. So I want I to know your... I, I, I really don't know because of uh, I'm a Gujarati person or the another problem. I, see how it started. Uh, it started very, 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 very early stage. But in, in my school days, I just I, I just give you an example. In my school days, I always give this example because it was my first thing in my mind. That uh, in my school days, first day of my eighth standard, and school teacher started writing the timetable on that board. Okay. And he made that, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then this, 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 this. And every day you have to bring the books like that. I was watching them and people were okay where to where to write that okay we have to we, we need that so in the last page of that they made that you know you they were making that i was looking at them and i was like okay there is a demand of that timetable 
so i said okay like, i uh, like you had it in your jeans probably <laughs> yeah so i was like okay there is a demand so i went back home and uh, i made that because i had my uncle had a computer and the printer so i went there i made uh, in a software uh, the timetable properly with good design school name standard name this that blah 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 and i made this small printer printed uh, thing and my uncle had the sticker pages so i made that good sticker pages of that timetable i went back to school and said okay if you want i will give in 2 rupees that's fine 2 rupees <laughs> so it was it was fun it was just for fun then uh, uh, when they started okay so oh, uh, i'm really amazed because if i hadn't been in that classroom what i would have, would have done is like wrote it down in my notebook and i wouldn't have given 2 rupees to you also <laughs> <laughs> so no nah, but it was it worked and after that so many things happened that after but that i'm amazed that this like your idea like uh, being so observant and making use of that uh, i'm really amazed by it because all, it all is way beyond my capability always i had this uh, this this have and me gene only that i just keep searching for the opportunity what i can do even in in college days i went to the college and uh, i was in hostel and i wanted to create some money for my just uh, pocket money or something like that so i was here and there and i was just going into the shops and shops and there was shop of watches so in in watches i was i asked him okay how much for the watch he said uh, this wholesale this is the wholesale uh, watch uh, store so if you oh. buy around 10 uh, watches you will uh, uh, get from some some rupees or something like that 100 rupees or something like that and if you want you want one watch i will give it for 150 i was like okay 50 rupees margin okay so i i offered him because i didn't have any money so i offered him the okay give me my college time do you know like what was my idea of making money work hard and get scholarship <laughs> <laughs> no no i i was i was in hyderabad i'm just talking about the mindset how mindsets are different like your idea of making money and my idea of making money you like pull yeah, that part like different. even 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 that day see i what i did i see the mindset when i don't have money i i have something to create money out of thin air so i asked that watch watch maker that can you give me 10 uh, watches for uh, a day if you if you give me for a day i'll try to sell this and i'll give you the money and he uh, saw me and he was like okay give me few money as a guarantee and i'll give you and something like that happened i had some few money i gave him i took that wow. I, I, i find it amazing like yeah. you you have it in your genes or blood like this entrepreneurship like uh, and uh, for me entrepreneurship business doing was always conditioned like no it's related to black money it's all those things and i always had this no no anyway no. sajid like we're approaching uh, end of our time so how do you want to wrap it up yo so now see it's this is this talk about actually was you but uh, thank you for asking me the questions as well but uh, it was fun fun for talking to you so now what i wanted to uh, just ask and wrap it up we still have 2 minutes to wrap up so what i would like to say that this is uh, i already have your uh, details and i am going to put my details in the podcast as well and we will keep in touch of course again the people who wants to go for the money management uh, learning money management coaching or they want to uh, like uh, learn about money more so always your uh, details are there so uh, i will share that and so that in my audience uh at times uh, like uh, because of my own mindset i can't coach them about how to make money i'm going to direct them to you <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> how to make money out of thin air because like you are the person to go go to person for that yeah that i can do for sure that and i i i would love to help them even even my own co- coaching uh, uh, courses coach the coach in in my website also i just there is one Uh, star and i put that a bonus as a bonus a lot of people come to me is asking this question how should we make money i tell them yeah, that you have to figure out once you make money then come to me <laughs> so <laughs> first i'll send them to you and then <laughs> ask them to come to me in my course coursing my in my coaching also i put that one one pointer that okay if you don't have an idea of businesses i will give you plenty of them and i will teach you to and coach you to make money out of thin air i keep my mind okay i can i can money i can money so now we have a collaboration like both yeah. of us are going to 
<laughs> we, together on this. We can do that. We can do that. And thank you so much for coming again. And this conversation was more fun. And thank you so much for uh, you know giving the insight of for me as well because some some part I am lacking. And as you said, you need to make money. So we both are very good in collaboration. No problem. Okay. Cool. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Sajad. Yes. And yes. I will send you my link after this, and let's talk about the next one. Uh, so that. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye.